Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brand Therapist Podcast. This is your host, Jamilka Rodriguez, and I'm so excited to have English with me here today. And before we get asking her some questions, I'm going to read her bio. So English Simone is a leader of care, a symbol of endurance, and a shoulder of support. She is dedicated to providing a voice, opportunities, and empowerment to those who would otherwise never receive a fighting chance. With her natural compassion for people and 10 years of leadership experience, she has dedicated her life in championing community empowerment and creating equitable opportunities. With undergrad studies in psychology and African-American studies and her MA in law, health, law, and policy, English Simone. English Simone's journey emphasizes her calling to positively impact individuals and communities. For managing nonprofit programming in multiple countries throughout Metro Atlanta and to co authoring the Amazon bestseller, There Is No Health Without Mental Health Anthology, Volume 2, Series 1. She has dedicated her career to improving lives of those who need it. As the founder of R&R Total Health Alliance and R&R Total Enterprise, English Simone uses her in-depth understanding of the ability to connect with diverse people to consult with her policymakers, executives, and corporate leaders on how to engage, educate, and empower their client-facing team members. Welcome, welcome, Simone. Thank you so much, Yamilka, for having me. I'm so excited. Yay. So we always start the podcast with um, this test that you took. Um, I don't remember if you remember. I, I We usually do it live to see kind of how that test connects to your real life. So I'm going to read The Magician. You are a magician. And yes. so there's... That is that is literally and figuratively. I'm sure people have always asked you, how do you make things happen? Well, you put a little magic in there, right? And it just poof. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Let me let me read the magician to you. A magician sees the world as systems and is attracted to things that help them change, transform, and heal. The motivation is change. The need is to transform. The fear is being undervalued and the behaviors is inquires about the world around them, sees the world as systems and achieves unbelievable feats. How does that sound? That sounds spot on. Definitely. <laughs> I can relate. And when I got the results, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I finally <laughs> hit it on the head here. Exactly. <laughs> and what's really cool about that is that it only asks you two questions, right? Right. Two questions. And it read my entire life back to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So let me ask you, there's five value words that represent the magician. And I'm going to read out the word and you're going to give it your personal definition. Now, this is not a dictionary definition. This is your personal take on this word. So tell me what adaptive means to you. Adaptive to me means being able to change up and adjust immediately that's that's the best way i can put it yeah awesome insightful insightful means pulling what's inside and providing sight to others like it's just the way that you can paint the picture and make others relate love it persuasive <laughs> this is a good one um so persuasive being able to change someone's vision, perspective, or feelings just simply because of who you are. Love it. Dynamic. Oh, man. For me, dynamics are the camaraderie, the energy, and just the, the way it all comes together. Love it. And magnetic is the last one. attraction or repelling it can be either or and depending on the situation it can be good or bad either way <laughs> oh i love it i love your definitions okay awesome so tell me english tell me 
Um, we, you know, this is the brand therapist show. I always tell people that, and it wouldn't be therapy if we didn't talk about childhood. So tell me about a story in your childhood that kind of epitomizes what you do today. Oh man. And in advance, I am trying to be as less wordy as I am because I love to talk, right? Because, you know, again, especially one of the reasons I was attracted to the brand therapy, therapy, because I love therapy. I love talking, communicating. So with that being said, I'll try to summarize this as best as possible. So um, my childhood, in general, I would like to consider it a great combination of some stereotypes, but also the extraordinary. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I did come from a broken home where things just weren't as beautiful as I would have hoped them to be. And yet we were afforded so many opportunities that my peers just couldn't imagine. Like we were considered the oddballs of the, of the neighborhood. So as I got, as I started to get older and I started to see things, for instance, I saw peers who came from less than favorable circumstances, peers who were born to um, parents who were addicted to substances and such. I also saw how they didn't get that same support that I did. So while we did have some difficult things in my household, my parents were so supportive. And I saw how many children didn't have that support. And I saw how people will treat you according to what they feel others, especially those immediate to you, will treat you. And I distinctly remember two classmates who came to my school and they were putting it mildly, they were different. They were very different. Their behavior was off and they were very wild and loud and people looked down on them. And I, even at that age, I could tell. And I used to hear go, grown ups gossip about them not having the resources and them not having the support. And, and, you know, in my mind, I didn't know what resources were, but I knew what support was because I had it every day. And so it just led me to see how children at that young of an age, because mind you, I was in elementary school at this time, even children at that age are impacted by what they have or what they don't. And this word resources must be important because it dictates how others see you and ultimately can make you feel. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and I began to spotlight things around me that reflect that similar trend. And I told myself, well, I know I can't help what I have, so I'm pretty sure they can't either. So I was, it was then where I was like, hey, I want to help people. I don't know how. At that age, I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> but I always knew that I wanted to help because some people don't have these quote unquote resources. And so I wanted to be able to be that connection for those people who didn't have it so that they can rise above whatever the circumstances were. Wow, I love that. So I guess that gets me to my next question. What is your personal brand all about? Oh, <laughs> my personal brand, it really, it, it really captures like the mama bear in me. <laughs> I am a mama bear in every position that I've held and pretty much everywhere I go, I automatically get almost over the, the defensive because I'm like, okay, leave this person alone because we don't know X, Y, and Z. But now that I'm here, we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna make some things happen. And I, I, I go to everyone with tough love and we never separate. I mean, I have some, I call them my babies. So I have some babies from um, my days in retail who still reach out to me and they're having children now and it makes me feel older than probably what I should. But my, my personal brand allows me to be nurturing yet aggressive when necessary because I give that voice to those who otherwise wouldn't be able to talk, wouldn't be able to be heard. And I, I'm able to address it in such a way that others can understand. And so being in both positions of, you know, great circumstances and less than fortunate circumstances, it positions me in such a way that I can be an impact, but I can be relatable. So I can sit at any table and converse with anyone and still connect the dots for different types of people. So very nurturing mama bear type brand who gets things done. 
Oh, yes. I love it. So tell me, what is, what is your business? What do you do for people? What is, what is that all about? Like, get us, um, cause I know you, you, you talked about, you know, the, the, um, R and R, um, Total Health Alliance. What is that all about? So R and R Total Health Alliance is my growing nonprofit. And within that, we offer an array of services and support systems to where people can rise above their challenges without feeling the pressures of having to rush through it or without feeling like they're having to compete for simply a space to be safe. And so from mentorship programs to scholarships to homelessness prevention and rental financial assistance, essentially, um, we help connect individuals to those resources. Um, and, you know, it's very, one of the things that I learned in working in nonprofit management is that it's very um, competitive. Unfortunately, there are so yeah. many people who are struggling to simply say, I got through another day. And so with that being said, again, those resources are slim in comparison to what people really need. So I'm simply adding to that network and pulling from my network of people that I've met along the way to further that that mission to just level the playing field in life. Like we wanted people to be at minimum their best selves. And if they expand beyond that, perfect. But our, our Total Health Alliance is essentially pulling all aspects of your health, your mental health, physical health, men, your spiritual health, and building on that so that you can be and feel better. Oh, wow, that's pretty incredible. So to that, what is your greatest fear? My greatest fear. My greatest fear is not leaving a legacy that my parents would be proud of and that my children wouldn't be proud of. And I say that because, you know, our parents have paved the way for us in many ways. And, you know, my father's no longer here, but my mother is. And they both, it's opposite as they were, they are great parts of me. <laughs> the, the nurturing part of me is definitely my mother, but the aggressiveness, that's my father. That's my father true and through. And I want them to know that the things that they sacrificed were well invested in that I'm a not just a, the seed that they sow, but I am the greatness that reflects them. And the same for my children, because there have been times where, you know, I wasn't able to show up for some school programs or where they may have not understood why we couldn't have certain things. And I want them to understand that I'm working hard so that other families and children can have at least a love and the type of environment that I provide to them. And so just making them proud and so far so good. Oh, so I far, love so I love that. I love how you turn that around. So, and you know, that that is true. A lot of us um, want to leave a sort of legacy in this world. And I think having that impact and, in, in, you know, making our way through those difficult times, I think also help us um, know that we're doing the right thing, right? I love the work that you're doing in the nonprofit Absolutely. world. And I know you're right, like there's a lot of competition in the nonprofit world because like there's so many nonprofits and and you wanna give something to everybody. And so it's like, um, you know, really believing in what you do and just moving forward with it. So let me ask you this, um, you know, we all have mentors in this world and um, tell me a story about one of your mentors and how that got you to where you are today. That's a good one. And the thing I love about mentors is that they're, they're custom fitted to the chapter of your life, right? So I've grown so much. I could, I, I've just grown so much and there are different chapters that I attribute to different people. So, but I will say now that I have found myself, my greatest mentor at this very moment has been an individual named Junior Frederick. And on a professional level, he has taught me um, how to overcome that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because again, I just stepped into a space where I not only believe in myself, 
but I can show others that this is real, this is authentic. And not only am I authentic in my way, but I'm knowledgeable. And so just allowing me to really reflect on my my attributes as a professional and being able to comfortably pull out my personal experiences and apply those. Um, Junior Frederick has been alongside me, just teaching me and growing me and speaking to me about representing my business with very real authentic pieces of myself. Um, and I met him through um, an organization or a company that works with building executive leaders and that speaks to having conversations around how to position yourself. So in that way, I, I commend Mr. Frederick. If you hear this, thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> now, I always have to go back to my mother because again, you know, I I brag about her so much. She is definitely my personal mentor. And as I've gotten older, I see the strength that she had is unmatched by many. I, you know, she endured a lot that I didn't even, I'm glad I didn't know as a child, let's say that. And so to see her walk and carry herself with such grace, she just called me before I, I came on today. So <laughs> just in her being there and being amazing and teaching me how to push through, be strong and be beautiful. No, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's big for me. It really keeps me going. Oh, I love that. You know, I just uh, wrote a book and the people I wrote in there as mentors obviously were my mom and dad. Um, the two different characters, right? Completely, at least in, like you said, you know, your yeah. dad was, was the, you know, and your mom was a nurturing one. My mom also was a nurturing one. I could say she was, you know, like, you know, one of those, um, um, I, 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 you know, like mothers of all, like she's not just my mother, but mothers to other people. And so, um, and I, I try to explain that through some of the archetype work that I did, but it's just really, I, I think I have other mentors, obviously, like you mentioned, but I think your parents, um, at the moment, I think a lot of us with parents probably like, oh my God, my mother, my father, it's just driving me crazy. But I think there's a point in your life where you're, <laughs> you're like acknowledging all this, all the things they did for you and their strength and, and their commitment mm -hmm. and really praising them for all the love and everything that they gave, you know, um, uh, to us. So I love that. But like, if I go to the next question, it would be around what are your like five lessons learned or three lessons learned uh, over your lifetime? Like what are the top three lessons learned? Ooh, top three, top three, okay. To narrow it down to three, um, something I learned early in was you have to become comfortable with no. Mm. Rejection was a very big thing for me. And I honestly didn't really feel it until I started to exit high school. Because I, you know how you have so, some of those kids who they just, they just naturally excel. Like, okay, I'm just gonna show up and take the test today and I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. I did that. I won all of my elections. I had a lot of friends in different neighborhoods. Like it was great. And then I got to my senior year of high school. I lost every election. I made my first B and I'm like, oh my gosh, life hates me. It was so dramatic, but <laughs> <laughs> just learning to become comfortable with no. And that was just the, the, the beginning of it, you know? And I just got to a point where I I had to take that mindset with me into my career field, you know, learning that some will, some won't. That was something I learned when working in sales. Like you're gonna make some sales and you're not gonna make others and that's okay. Um, and then as far as a second lesson, I guess going back to combating the imposter syndrome, overcoming that and being confident in yourself. You know, it's one thing for you to, to have a skill, it's, but it's completely different to be able to show that skill mm -hmm. and being able to convince others that you are the subject matter expert. And it's okay to show that you're constantly progressing. That's not being an imposter, that just shows transition, that shows growth. And if you're not growing, then 
you're doing the worst. <laughs> so overcoming that. And then the greatest lesson for me is learning to juggle um, a career as a single parent. And with that, I say the most important lesson of all because it allows me to show my children that, hey, it might not be perfect, but it could definitely be worse. But we're doing this for each other. I'm showing you, I'm laying the frank, the groundwork for you guys to excel because there have been times where I've walked away from positions because my children were suffering in ways that money could never matter. It would never matter. And at the end of the day, their health and well-being, the things that I fight for, for other people to have, my children have to have it first. <laughs> so, you know, finding the fine line, widening that fine line, I should say, and finding that balance. And, and thankfully, I have well-behaved kids who are only nine and 12. I mean, I'm sorry, nine and 13. But they're great children and they they stand behind me a thousand percent and it, it makes it easier for me to do these things. But finding that balance and being comfortable in that space was the greatest lesson that I I wouldn't trade change for anything in the world. You know, I um, I always admire women. I have a stepson, so it's different when you have a stepson than when you have your own children. I, I understand that. But as a, um, I, I always wonder, like, how do these women that have kids do it all? Like, sometimes I feel constrained, even with my stepson, because I have to take care of him at times. And, um, you know, he has disabilities. So it's a little different than having, um, you know, a child that runs around and stuff. But still, like... I feel like I have to, you know, redo my calendar, redo this. I can't imagine being a full-time parent and juggling, you know, your own business and all the things that kind of comes with that as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I admire you for your mm -hmm. amazing courage and, and um, you know, you talked about being authentic and I think that's another piece, like staying with the authenticity of who you are and getting through, you know, those, what you said, um, that, that, um, piece where you don't, you know, you're not sure if you have it or don't have it or have the strength to kind of move forward or the, the certifications or whatever that is. But, but, um, life gives that to you just by yes. the way that the importance that you put in that. So, so that's pretty, pretty amazing. So let me ask you this, where, where is your life? Like, where do you see your life going in the next five to 10 years? Ooh, hopefully to Italy, definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> um, five to 10 years. I want to, oh, that's a good question. I want to see, I want a seat at the table because again, I don't necessarily want the fame, but I want to see the change. So I want to be able to be at in the White Houses and to be in the governor's offices and having these conversations and, you know, sipping on some Sprite or some tea or whatever they decide to have that day and just really highlight some things that their constituents are experiencing, you know, making making conversations about life less stressful, but more relatable so that we can take action. And whether it takes five years, 10 years, 10 hundred years, I'm not sure, but I definitely want people to know that overall, you have, if, if not anyone else, you have English Simone Walker here on your side and we're gonna make some things happen. Now, on a personal level, like I say, I want to travel more because inequities and and you know prejudice these aren't just within the states these are worldwide things mm -hmm. and in a dream world we can find a balance for everyone if we can only work together to find that balance so once we begin to expand those conversations and we get everyone involved all hands on deck then we can come closer get closer and closer to that goal so i see myself traveling to these different places and experiencing these multiple cultures and 
still traveling my ca- carrying i should say my brand with me and building on it as i'm floating down some sea on a beautiful boat and with my pinky in the air and holding roses and <laughs> so i but love I it want in to italy you to forgot start to mention in italy. More. <laughs> yes yes in italy so <laughs> for sure <laughs> i love that i love that vision so tell us simone where uh, or english simone sorry tell us where that people can find you where where are you mostly on social media how can people reach you absolutely i am on instagram facebook and linkedin all under english simone official so english simone underscore official um, that's the way to reach me on social media but if you ever feel the need to contact me directly feel free to email me at contact dot english simone dot info i love hearing from people and stepping in wherever i can to assist or just having these conversations so definitely there oh thank you so much i'm so excited to have you on my show. And I'm sure the listeners enjoyed this incredible, incredible podcast. Thank you so much, uh, English. Sim- I want to call you Simone for some reason. English Simones, thank you so That's much for fine. being on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me so much. Thank you. And everybody, we'll see you on the next show.